to give you a very brief history about Cape Coast Castle before we move into the male dungeon. Cape Coast Castle is a British castle built in the year 1665 by them. It took the English over 60 solid years, 60 years, for them to build Cape Coast Castle. They used the Africans mm. to build this castle. We have in Ghana three castles and over 14 forts as well. We have the St. George's Castle, well known as Elmina Castle. We have the Christian Bock Castle in Accra. This one is Cape Coast Castle, the very last one. Elmina Castle is the biggest. The mm. oldest. That's why I moved to the uh, okay. And the largest castle in West Africa. Elmina. Okay. And that was built by the Portuguese. Portuguese. Around 1482. They were led by Don Diego de Azambuja. Yeah. It is 535 years old now. 535 years. Mm. 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 But the one in Accra was built by Denmark. Danish 1661. It is 356 years old. Hmm. This English castle, 1665. And this one is 352 years now. Hmm. So Cape Coast Castle is the youngest or the smallest castle in Ghana in terms of age and size. The castle you are today began as a fort. The very fort was built by the Swedish Sweden around 1654. They named their fort as Fort Karol Lisbeck, Karol Lisbeck, after a king in Sweden. The king was called King Charles X. The fort changed hands for about four times due to stiff European competition. 1658, Denmark people took over the fort from the Swedish. 1661, the local people in this town, that is the Fetu people, seized the fort from the Danes. 1664, Dutch occupied it. But due to the Anglo-Dutch war in the subsequent year, English had it. They transformed the fort into the very castle. It took them 60 years for its transformation. So Cape Coast Castle is a living monument okay. and also a World Heritage Site in this country. It was listed by UNESCO around 1979. In the olden days, wrongdoers were sold into slavery as punishment. Arm robbers were sold, murderers were sold, but some were good people. Some were innocent. They were brought in. Mm. And not only Ghanaians. Some came from Nigeria, Senegal, Benin to Cape Coast Castle because this was their headquarters. We have a hall we call Palava Hall here. Palava Hall. Doctors were in that hall. So doctors and nurses examined the captives. We are saying that strong men and women were known as commercial captives. But the weak were the domestic captives. Male dungeon. This dungeon held 1,000 captives at a time. 1,000. 1,000. This whole space. <laughs> it, it is quite spacious. It looks more. <laughs> <laughs> we have in the middle dungeon five chambers. So each chamber held 200 captives. Surprisingly. Surprisingly. Right on top of this dungeon was a church. Mm. Church on the dungeon. Society for the Propagation of the Gospel, SPG Church. Oh, yeah. The pastor was interestingly an, you know, a Ghanaian pastor hmm. by name Philip Quill. The pastor's father was a slave trader by name Aubrey Pong okay. The floor here slopes a little bit slippery, but more will be told and more will be seen in the dungeon. My special guest, I hope you are ready. Yes. Sorry. Yes,
We are now in the male slave dungeon. The bust you see here of the portrait, the idea is to let you understand more how our forefathers suffered in here by their facial expressions. Can you get closer to for me? Uh, for example, the one we have here with the bandage, this red one, the idea is to let you understand how, you know, when he was captured, he fought. So he sustained serious injuries in the head. The same person cannot see it again. He is blind. On my right hand side, we have another one here. He has opened his mouth. He is crying bitterly in this country. Now, I mentioned five chambers in a male dungeon. This is the first chamber. And I said each chamber held 200 captives. And it's the first one. So the numbers in this one had their right and there from this side. And they were in the dungeon for three months. So after three months, the enslaved Africans were shipped from the dungeon to the Americas and the Caribbean to sell. My special guest, I just want to turn off the light here for only 10 seconds for you to experience the darkness here. After that, I'm going to come back and hit you. So I'll be right back, just as well. During the slave trade, the dealers or the slave traders were many. So they had their own individual ways of branding or identifying their captives. Some slave traders used earring, earring to identify their captives. Others went in for the said iron, I mean branded iron itself on their skin. Beneath the branded iron was the trader's symbol, initials, somewhere like ATI, KOI, JSS. It simply means John Simmet Slave, JSS. It was placed or dipped into a very hot fire, and right from the fire, Women at the back stand, men chest, or even here, just to identify them. So during the branding, the strong men were held in this chamber. But because of their strength, they were locked up. They were chained and shackled. So during vomit and toilet on the floor, they were in this same mess for three months. Now, look on the wall here. We have this white mark here, the very white mark. And you'll see here, the white mark is right here. Uh -huh. So, ladies and gentlemen, I have my hand on this mark now. So, from this level to the base, the floor, this very height was filled up with choked toilet, mm. choked toilet, urine, and vomit up to this level, all over the place. I mean, everywhere. So where we are now has been excavated. That was in 1974. Hmm. This is the original floor. Trench for drainage. When it rains, the waters run through the holes out there here, like you are seeing today, just to wash the surface of their mess through the same trench into the very deep sea. But the trench wasn't used because their mess got it covered up to the side. Most of them became partially blind. Malaria, diarrhea killed many of them. So we are saying that those who died in this dungeon exceeded those who survived. 
Over 35 million Africans were transported into slavery. But 25% came to Cape Coast Castle because this was their major trading post or headquarters. Spy hole for better supervision. Soldiers only. Soldiers again stand there every afternoon with a bucket of sea water just to pour on them here to cool down their body temperatures. Right above the dungeon was a church. Church on the dungeon. Society for the propagation of the gospel. It is Anglican church today. And the pastor was a Ghanaian, Philip Kuku. Hmm. So we have Anglican church in this castle on a dungeon, Catholic church in Elmina Castle, Presby in Accra. As I speak to you right now, slave trade is gone, but slavery is still ongoing in a very modernized way. You know, human trafficking, you know, child prostitution, and that's modern day slavery. They get the food, all right. But they end collectively always in the dungeon. So if we read man, how are you going to feed yourself? Because you have to struggle the I mean the strong men here. Some couldn't do that. Hunger killed most of them. And when they died, they were just thrown into the very deep sea. I ask this question every day. You know, if you're a good businessman and really mean business, you keep your commodities or your product in a safe place. So you make more money. But why are they more treating it? Why would they be more treating the captives? It's a simple question. They got them very cheap. So they knew that, oh, even if 100 or more should die this minute, they will get more the next day. And that was our mentality. And this place is quite different from what we've seen so far. The light we have here. We've got reeds, flowers behind you, and a shrine on my left hand side. We have a small room on my left hand. But the reeds we have there were laid in this dungeon by the African Americans, diasporians. We want to respect. They want to appreciate or honor their ancestors to the brother. The Obamas were in this castle or in this very dungeon on July 11, 2009. Michelle Obama is saying that her ancestors were right here. So they came to see Cape Coast Castle and then how they were all treated in the olden days. Now, this castle was built on a rock. Cape Coast Castle, solid foundation. But that rock was a god, object of worship in the olden days. When the English were about to build the castle, they managed to move part of the rock. Why? Because they were looking for a leveled ground. So they built the castle on the rock. In 1973, traditional council of chiefs in Oga or Cape Coast today came together and they built this altar we have here to let the English know that if they have built a castle on their rock which is the God they can never deny what they believe in so it's like they are reclaiming it the indigenous people still worship the deity till date but we are seeing that during the slave trade this altar wasn't here but built in 1973, right after the slave trade. We have in Cape Coast 77 gods, <laughs> traditional gods, 77 in Cape Coast here. Yeah. This one of them. This one is Nana Tabil. Nana Tabil. And this is a rock date. So we have one broken rock here and one up as X symbol. Now, behind the white material here, was this entrance. The very entrance that time connected male dungeon to the door of no return mm. through here. 70 meters walk underground. So every three months, those who survived and were strong were forced to walk through here in chains, barefooted to the door of no return. Women came to join them 
and they all used that door. That was where we lost contact with them. Brazil, Jamaica, Cuba, Haiti, Bahamas, Barbados, and the rest. But if we're weak captive, you don't go through here because you are weak. You go to that small room to die. After death, they were thrown into the very deep sea. But the entrance was blocked in 1833 when the English finally abolished the slave trade as a symbol. This held the same numbers, 200 captives, and that was the lives and hair for three months, for 200 captives. This was the spy hole, like the first chamber. But this spy hole wasn't open like this that time, just recently. Most of them found dignity in suicide here, the captives. Others voluntarily embarked on hunger strike to die here than to go there. But some too died on the very sea. So few of them survived there. Philip, quick. The priest. The priest. Philip, quick. He was born around 1741 on March 13th. And uh, he was sent to England around 1754 with two boys, William and Thomas. The two boys passed away in England. So he was the first African to be ordained as a priest in the Anglican Church. There was nothing like pie-born water in the olden days. No tap water. What we have here, harvested rain water. It is today high reborn to this time. This one is 18 feet deep down, like 6 meters. Hmm. Now, diarrhea killed most of the captives. Diarrhea can take the water. But the white people got the water here boiled before they take it. Part of the underground tunnel. Part of the tunnel. The men came from their very dungeon in the last chamber. We walked through here in chains and in shackles to the door of no return. So one English officer stood right here with his light just to count the captives. He want to know how many they are before they hold the ship. So this was their checkpoint. But they came from the last chamber in their own dungeon. Going through here in chains and he was here doing the count. It is 13, one train, 13 feet deep down, no stairs. Because they were passing through from this to the other end and was here counting them, that's it. Now, another officer was also there, the second checkpoint, to confirm what has counted. So that was the confirmation point. But that one has been blocked now. So we are taking one step down. One step. One step. One step. One step. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Arabs, Arabians, they also did slavery. Adias was in North of Africa. Algeria, Egypt, Morocco, and the rest. Tunisia. So that's a trans-Sahara slave trade mm -hmm. we are talking about. But we are focusing on today only about transatlantic here. When it comes to West Africa, most historians talk a lot about the Portuguese. West Africa. It is because they were the first Europeans to set foot here mm -hmm. around 1471. When Portuguese arrived, there was abundance of gold here. So we got the name Gold Coast. French were in La Côte d'Ivoire. La Côte d'Ivoire. Lots of ivory, ivory coast. Portuguese were in Cape Rouge. It is today Liberia, we call it. Lots of grain, grain coast. Benin, Togo, Angola, many slaves, so slave coast. In the early 17th century, Portuguese enjoyed their trade. They took most of our people out. They even came back. But those ones were sent to South America for them to work on their new plantation farms. This side, this very side, happens to be the exit point from the tunnel. Exit. Due to the tidal waves, it was blocked. So the male slaves came through here. There was an open here. They came through here, went this way out to the door of no return straight ahead. And that was where they saw light for the first time in three months, just outside there. But currently, both ends have been brought to you. That was in 1833, when the English finally abolished the slave trade. Let's visit the female punishment cell, and I'll tell you why we punished them. Female punishment cell. So, Resistant rip from who? So what is that all doing? Yes. What's the whole one for during vomit and toilet? And they were in the cell for a whole week. It held eight women at a time. A big door here locked up. Light and air here. Sometimes food as well through here. So that's a female punishment cell for resisting. Wonderful guest. This is a female dungeon. We are in their first chamber. The next door, second chamber. So each chamber held 150. The numbers in this one had their light and air. Now, those who said no to death or resisted rape were taken from this dungeon to the punishment cell for a week. Most of them were already weak because they had walked from the north. Salaka, Paka, Sandilma to the south. The strength wasn't there. So they were raped based on their weaknesses. Most of them picked seed. They got pregnant here. Pregnant women weren't allowed to stay in the dungeon. But they were sent to town under a watch of a soldier. 
Now, after birth, if the very person who made the captive pregnant want to maintain the captive, he will just allow her to stay in town with the baby, meaning she is not free from slavery. But if the governor or the soldier doesn't want to maintain a captive, she came back after birth immediately, but not to the baby. Those babies were allowed to attend the very first school we had here in the then Gold Coast, Castle School. The school was for the half-breed mulattoes, half-caste. Those who were found pregnant on the slave ship were thrown into the sea alive. Many of them were raped. When you come to Ghana and you visit Central Region, like where you've come today, we have a whole lot of English names here. English names. Johnson, Blankson, Thompson, Ferguson, Riverson, John, William, lot of them. They couldn't also mention our local names well. So they anglicized most of our local names. A name like Yao, Yao, Y-A-W. The name Yao is a Thursday born here. But Yao is today your sin. Your sin. Kweku, Kweku, K-W-E-K-U. That's the one is they born. Kwaku or Kweku, like the pastor's name, Philip Kweku. A name like Kuntu, Kuntu, that is Blanket, Blankson. Kwesi, Sunday, Quincy, Quincy Jones, Q U I N C Y. A name like Atta, you know Atta is a twin. Yeah. Atta is A T T A or H. It is today A R T H U R. Kobina, Tuesday on Kobi. Kojo, Monday, Kudo. But the actual slave age was from 13 years and above. Those beyond the age of 50 were shaved and smeared with oil for them to look much younger before they were sold. It is time to use the very door of no return. But do not worry, I'll make sure you we return. return. Door of no return. Thank you. Door of no return. This door is not the original door. This door here is not the original door. The original door was very short and narrow. So they entered one at a time in chains and in shackles. Behind the door we have here, we also have door of return. And that door was written in 1998, August 1st, when Ghana celebrated Emancipation Day. That time, two dead bodies were exhumed from their graves. Samuel Carson from USA, Madame Crystal from Jamaica. They were once slaves. Oh, they were slaves? Mm -hmm. Yes, they, they were. were. They okay. Were. So they brought their bones in a coffin to Ghana to perform a very short ceremony at the graveyard. We are saying that they were reburied at Asin Mansour in Ghana. The door of the return here is no more now. But we have door of return today. Right. It is behind you, door of return. It's now official. We have this broken wall over there. A broken wall. Can you see that bro that very broken wall? Ah. So for, yeah, that very wall. The one with the uh, little bow spot on it. So from where we are standing to that wall, we call this side a European beach. Why that? English were saying that anytime they feel like swimming, 
And they come here to the beach to have fun. Black people also join them here. But they don't like it at all. So they build that wall for separation. Oh. The ship that came couldn't bet here, the slave ship. So they used smaller boats to board the bigger ship on the sea. The slave ships came with wonderful names. The ships, names like God is able. God is able. <laughs> <laughs> names like Jesus, Liberty, Santiago, Santa Maria. And that means Saint Mary. It is more than 200 years old. And this is a condemned cell. Before we go in, a quick explanation here. We have three rooms in this cell. Three rooms. The innermost one, the main one in there, and the very second room on my right hand side here. They are the main condemned cells, the real one. The first one here, where I'm pointing out. We call it guard room here for the white soldiers. Why the white soldiers? Most of them violated the law. English soldiers. So those ones were in this very small cell as punishment. And they were in there for some few hours or minutes and they were released. We enjoyed light and air from this angle. Soldiers only. The male captives those in there, no food, no water, no air, and no light. Still chained until they die. The marks we have on the floor here were made by them with their chains and shackles. When they were struggling to die on the floor. Oh, the run marks? Yes, please. Oh. And the short lines too. Okay. This cell it held 50 male captives at a time. Five zero. No food, no water, no air, no light. Still in chains until death. Why come themselves? For those who fought for their freedom. Those who made their attempt to escape. They were caught, brought them here to die. They said it was what deterrent to others. So there was a door here. This was their third door. It was locked up. Second door in the middle, locked up. And the first door outside again for 15 men here. The light will be off. Door will be shut for only five seconds for his day, just five seconds. So the third door was also locked up, middle door locked, third door already locked for 50 male slaves in the cell. No food, no water, no air, no light, still in chains and in shadows until he died. Condemned, <laughs> British soldiers who are being punished right yes. here. And then we hear these wailing of the. It was also a meeting place 
for discussions among the community of merchants. So, original marble stone, over 200 years old now, over 200 years old now, it is still strong. And if you look down here, this yard was a soldier's barracks, a craft shops, soldier's barracks. It was a prison yard during the colonial days. But the building in the middle was the officer's mess. It got banged late last year. Hmm. The electrical fault. We have Fort William on the hill up there. That white building with a red cap Fort William on the hill. It was a watchtower over 50 years ago. For this very castle. The one the one the rest captain yeah. top of the day. So let's see where they were having their communication. And uh, again the, the guys have the fort there for today. Let's go to the communication from the group. So this was their communication room. How were they communicating? Light in the night, mirror reflection in the noon, flags in the morning to sense any data coming from this end to the one here. So soldier here and the one there were, were always for communicating. No cell phone, no Facebook, no WhatsApp. <laughs> this is communicated. So communication. <laughs> Alright, the last place. <laughs> Sale at the same time. We have nine windows here. 
So they, they, they were here one after the other. And they were mostly English Catholics. We have a new floor today. That's a new scene. Right, so it's all here. Let's see the governor's bed. Five windows. Five windows. Malaria, diarrhea killed most of the Europeans. So they named West Africa as the white man's grave. White man's grave. But we still have the governor's bed. The governor's furniture is right in this in our store room, but not in this castle. They have them there. We'll bring them back first. So his bedroom here, there, the leaking. Any question? Alright, this is the way. This is the closet. The governor's closet is wardrobe right here. Please, you need to watch your step. Very slippery here. Steps very slippery. There we go. Society for the Propagation of the Gospel. Church. Anglican Church. Right on the middle dungeon. It is today Children's Library. So let's walk right. That was the one. I want to see what that's the one. That's the one. The rooftop here. The church. Security folks. Security folks. Thank you. But the church is today children's library. It was on a dungeon, but now children's library. Let's end the guided tour here, please. Let's end the tour. This is very powerful. It was unveiled by the National House of Chiefs in Ghana as a sign of apology. Why the chiefs? In the olden days, the local chiefs played a vital role in the slave trade. And I think that this will never repeat again. And I quote, in everlasting memory of the anguish of our ancestors, may those who died rest in peace. May those who return find their root. May humanity never again perpetrate such injustice against humanity. We, the living, vow to uphold this. After every guided tour in Kipu's castle, most people get very angry. You know, it's a painful story. So I speak to you right now. It is still going on in a very modernized way. It's labor. Maybe there is love and even peace amongst us. We can still fight against it. Together we stand divided and fall. So be this calm for yours. Let's all unite as one. Once again, welcome to Kepko's Castle. The name has been Isaac Kofi Mensah. Have a wonderful evening and thank you for coming. Good evening.